In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate the uh, ending of an extra long live stream using Keyboard Maestro. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and uh, today I'm answering a question that was uh, asked by uh, Rich, who wanted to know how can we end a live stream after specifically 10 hours, but this will work for any particular length. Uh, now, why would you want to do that? And why would you want it to be automated? Well, the le length of the stream may give it away that uh, he's not actually going to be sitting there for 10 hours behind his computer doing this live stream. It is something that's just going to be running in the background. And uh, specifically, it is, uh, at least I'm assuming this is the use case, because I know that he does do some with this. Uh, it would be where you have these uh, continuous streams that are playing background music and things like that. So there's lots of these uh, sorts of channels uh, around th th doing that. Uh, and in fact, I'll leave a link to his channel just up in the top corner as well, uh, where this is uh, where this is happening, where it's a basically a continuous stream of music. Uh, and then there are, and in fact, in his case, it's from at Epidemic. And then there is also a playlist uh, that is uh, that is shown as well. So we'll actually show you the track that is uh, that is put up, I believe. <laughs> uh, but in any case, um, in the background, as well as the music, there is also a cycling series of uh, uh, sort of animated overlays as well going on in, in Ecamm. Uh, now, with animated overlays and with scenes, obviously, in Ecamm, you can just have a timer that is set to advance to the next scene, or you could have a timer that is set to end the uh, the broadcast uh, when the timer runs out. So, in theory, what you could do is just chain together all of these scenes uh, and then have the final scene be the one that ends the stream. Okay, in principle, but the only issue is that these... Uh, video clips or these animations are only about 30 seconds to a minute long so even at a minute long if you were wanting to run this for uh, 10 hours uh, then that would essentially be a chain of uh, Six, 600 <laughs> uh, scenes and uh, they're also they're going to be duplicating so that would mean that if you uh, because there's not uh, there's not 600 individual scenes that unique scenes it is going to be basically a case of creating the initial loop and then just duplicating it so it's going to be quite bloated from uh, Ecamm's point of view so not really the ideal solution uh, also if you did want to go and sort of change up the uh, uh, the animations and things like that then it would involve going in and sort of replacing multiple copies of the same one and and so on so not exactly the most elegant as I say so what we want to do is basically have all of the uh, the looping scenes that we want in Ecamm uh, but then we want to automate the the ending of the stream now we can actually automate the the starting and the ending as well uh, and so we're going to do that in Keyboard Maestro so first let's just have a very quick look at what I have done uh, in uh, in uh, Ecamm so if I come over to my uh, demo mode Basically, what we've got is timed stream demo. I've not actually put anything in here because uh, it's uh, irrelevant really for the for the demo. But if you've got a folder where you have multiple scenes in the folder, um, then basically, if you start one scene and you've got a timer to go to the next scene, once you get to the very last scene, it will come all the way back around to the beginning. So you could still have this uh, within a profile that had got other scenes in. So this is the one that I'm in at the moment. Uh, but it would, if you activated the scene one and had a timer to go to the next, the next, the next, the next, then when it got to scene five, it would just loop back around to the beginning. So let's just assume that we've got five scenes that we just want to loop for 10 hours, basically. Uh, so this is the way that that would be uh, set up. I did do another video actually all about this. So I'll leave a link to that in the, uh, in the top corner. Uh, but for now, let's head over to uh, Keyboard Maestro and have a look at the next step. So what we want to do in Keyboard Maestro, now that we've assuming we've got our scenes set up, is I'm going to, and I'll leave a link to my very first introduction video to uh, to Keyboard Maestro up in the top corner, just for those that uh, are unaware of how to use it. But we're going to go through something really basic uh, today. So uh, basically in Keyboard Maestro, just a quick recap in the interface, uh, you've got groups here, this column, which is basically just groups of macros. So this is how you sort of organize all of your automations. Uh, and then within each folder uh, or group, we have then got all of the macros that are contained within that. So I've got different ones grouped related to Keynote, uh, related to different businesses, related to different applications and things like that. And so in, in each of these folders, there is a group of macros, uh, which is listed here. Uh, and then when you click on any one of these macros, it will then tell you what the trigger is for that macro and the action that is going to uh, take place. So I'm not going to go in, as I say, to a full uh, overview of uh, Keyboard Maestro, but that in a nutshell is what we're looking at here with this interface. So I'm going to create a new group for this, which I'm going to call uh, Timed 
stream demo. And then now that I've created this folder, uh, we can leave all these settings just exactly as they are. I explained them in the first video that I've uh, linked to, uh, so I won't go through all of those, but basically we're just setting up a, a folder with the default uh, settings here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in uh, ultimately two macros, but I'll start with the first one. Uh, and I'm gonna just name this. When you add in a macro, it automatically highlights the uh, macro name. So I'm gonna call this one uh, start stream, like that. And then what we're gonna do is add a trigger. Now you can have lots of different types of trigger actually. So we can have it, uh, the, the, the common one that I guess people use is a hotkey. So you want it that when you press a hotkey like command, uh, S for command start or something like that. Although that would be command save, wouldn't it? That would be save <laughs> rather. Um, so um, so yeah, just you can use a, a hotkey, but you can also have all these other different uh, types of triggers. Again, I talked about this in the first video, but what we're gonna have a look at um, today is specifically somewhere down here. Uh, it's further down the list. There is quite a lot of them. So this one, uh, time of day trigger. So uh, here we can set the uh, the time. Uh, and these are usually used, this, this type of macro or this type of trigger rather, is usually used for like routine tasks. So for example, you might want to have something starting at uh, two o'clock in the morning, in the middle of the night to start a routine. Obviously probably not good for me because I tend to wake up at three. So <laughs> I would do it at a slightly different time. But what I mean is you can use this to schedule like routine tasks that are gonna happen maybe in the background, uh, or you might have it that before you get in to, uh, to start work, if you start work at a particular time, you might want it to start up a load of applications ready for when you get there at a particular time. So that's the use case for these uh, timed starts. I'm just gonna leave this actually at 8.30 just uh, for the time being. Uh, and let's say that the day that this is for is, uh, is a Monday. So we can just block out, as you can see, just select the days. So basically at 8.30 on a Monday is when this is gonna trigger. Now this will trigger every Monday. <laughs> so what you would want to do if you just wanted to use it like on an ad hoc basis, um, if I just quickly come back to, uh, to the, uh, the actual uh, folder, here you can see whether you can enable it or disable it. And you'll notice that when I uh, disable it, then we've got this sort of light blue folder rather than the dark blue folder. Don't know if you can make that out, but it is a, and the, the actual name of it is grayed out as well. Much like these ones here are grayed out because they're not active. Uh, but if you click enable, then it will be enabled. So once we've set this all up, uh, you'll basically enable it when you want to use it to initiate your stream uh, and then toggle it off when you want to end it. Uh, so anyway, I digress slightly. <laughs> we've now set our start time, but now we want to tell it actually what we're going to do. So uh, in Keyboard Maestro, this is the triggers and you can add multiple triggers, but we'll just stick with this one. Uh, and then down here is where you're gonna add in the actions. So this is what you're actually going to uh, be triggering when it, uh, when it, uh, when it triggers, <laughs> what action's gonna happen. So we're gonna click on this new action uh, and it will bring up all of the list of potential actions uh, and they are sort of categorized here. So you'll notice that what's happened here is it's covered up these two columns with a new set of two columns <laughs> so that you don't get confused. Click on new action, you'll see how it just slides up from the bottom. So this now is the categories of all of the different actions. Uh, and if you go into all actions, you can see all of the different types of actions that you could actually trigger. And there is a lot of them, which is why some people find uh, Keyboard Maestro a little bit daunting because they think, oh, there's loads of different actions. I'll never be able to learn all of those. Well, the fact is you only need to learn the one that you need for that particular uh, task. Uh, and uh, I don't use the majority of these. Uh, it's just when I want to use something, I'll be able to go in and find the, uh, the particular thing that I want to do. So don't be put off by the fact that there is a very large number of potential actions. All it means is, if you can think of something you want to do with Keyboard Maestro, you can probably do it. <laughs> so uh, in any case, let us have a search because you might think, well, how am I gonna find it? Well, there is a cunning little search box up here. So what we want to do is when the uh, the start time is, uh, uh, is triggered, then we want to basically activate something in Ecamm Live. We want it to start recording uh, and, uh, or in fact, start live streaming, isn't it? Uh, but that is just a menu item. So the start recording, end recording, start live streaming and live streaming is just a command in the menu of uh, Ecamm Live. So there is an action that you can have in uh, Keyboard Maestro. If I just type menu, uh, there's only two related to menu, so we've already uh, got rid of that daunting list, uh, and it's either one of these two. Show status menu, that's not what we want, or select or show a menu item. Well, we want to select the menu item to start live streaming or end live streaming. 
So let's click on start that, uh, start, a, start a menu item, select a menu item. I'm getting all my S's mixed up. Now you can either drag it into this little area here, uh, which is quite useful when you end up with a big stack of actions because you can chain actions together. So there are instances where you might want to drag this and just drop it into a particular place in the chain. Um, but for our purposes, you can also just double click it and it'll just add it to the bottom. And since there's nothing else in the list, uh, it's just exactly where we want it. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we've got some, uh, some settings that we can change with this. So this is the same with any keyboard maestro macro. Once you've added it in, there are lots of different ways that you can adjust it. So here we're going to go to select uh, front application. Well, we actually want a specific application because we want to trigger Ecamm Live. So I'm going to come down here and it will have all of the apps that you've got open listed. So if you are wanting to trigger something in another application, uh, make sure you do have the app open. Uh, but we're going to select Ecamm Live or the beta as it is because that's the one that I use. Now, if you know the uh, particular menu item that you want, you can actually add that in here. So the menu title, that would be the uh, actual name that appears in the menu bar on the Mac. Uh, and then menu item is the sub item. And uh, as you can see, there's a little plus. So we can actually add a whole chain. So if you've got something where it was, you know, in a nested folder within the menu stack, then you can uh, you can add those in as well. There is another way that you can get to it if you don't want to actually type it out because if you get the name wrong obviously uh, then it won't be able to trigger because it will be trying to trigger something that doesn't exist. So cunningly they have added this little menu button here uh, and from here you can basically go down to any app. Uh, so I'm going to go down to Ecamm Live and you can see now it's listing all of the different menus that come along the top of the menu bar. So we've got the Apple menu which is obviously in every uh, every app. Then you've got the, the main application uh, menu uh, and then we've got edit, profile, scene, source and so on. So these are all just the Ecamm Live menus. Now we want to uh, start and stop the recording. Or, or the live stream rather. Now because I am in record mode at the moment in Ecamm Live. Uh, then it actually changes the menu slightly of Ecamm Live. So uh, what you'll see is I've either got begin recording or end recording. I'm going to select that one for now. Uh, but in actual fact, to start a live stream, if we'd got live stream selected as the, uh, the output of Ecamm Live, uh, what that would say, rather than begin recording, it would actually say begin live session. So I'm just going to go and edit that now because obviously I'm recording at the moment. If you were uh, setting this up yourself, then just make sure you've got it into Ecamm Live, the destination to be streaming, uh, and then you'd just be able to pick the correct uh, item out of the menu. It's only because I'm currently recording to make this video that it doesn't show up, if that makes sense. So uh, there we go. We've got the, uh, basically, it's going to start uh, start recording at, um, uh, at 8.30. And... What we could actually do though, if you remember, I created those scenes one, two, three, and four, and five, uh, just to be sure that you do start at the beginning. Perhaps what I could also do is have it so that at the beginning, it goes to scene one first. So at 8.30, it does actually change to scene one and then it starts the recording. That might be just an extra little uh, fail safe, just in case you weren't in the correct scene or weren't in the correct scene in the folder, or maybe you were in a scene outside of the folder. So let's just do that, shall we? And we can actually do that just by duplicating this. So if I uh, duplicate action like that, uh, and I'm going to adjust the uh, the top one because we want it to change scene first. So what I can do here is if I come to my menu uh, and then I'll go to Ecamm Live and then I'll go down to scene uh, and then uh, let's have a little look. Where is it? It is um, the timed stream demo and scene one so can you see that's the folder that I've got with all of my uh, those scenes that I created uh, and so if I go to scene one there we go it's just one extra little step so now when the uh, the timer hits 8 30 it's going to basically go to scene one and then it will start the stream so now what we need to do is uh, let's just close that down. It can sometimes catch you out, by the way, that uh, this, this window sort of looks like the window that's underneath it. So these are all the actions. So just click this little cross button here to get rid of the actions. And then you'll see we're back to our group of macros and the macros within that group. So now what we want to do is actually do want to end the stream. Uh, and now what we could do here is actually just duplicate this one. So I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to change that to end stream and then I'm going to change the time on this. So if it's 10 hours, then basically we want that finishing at uh, 18.30 on the same day. 
Uh, we can get rid of this one because we don't want any scenes to be changed. So you just click in it and then delete any ones that any actions that you don't want. Uh, and then here, what we need to do is instead of begin live stream, we can actually just go and change that to end live stream. Uh, and that essentially is it. So if you wanted to do this on an ad hoc basis, you would just go in and uh, change the particular time and the date. So uh, or the day rather that you were on uh, and it would just start and it would stop it at that time. And that in a nutshell is how you would do that with um, uh with, uh, with Keyboard Maestro. One thing just to uh, remind you once again is do come into the folder and after the stream's finished, if you don't want this to happen every every Monday or every day or whatever it is, you would just toggle that one off and then it would be inactive. And you would know that it's inactive because it would be greyed out. So I hope that has uh, helped. Whoops, Daisy, come back to the, uh, the wrong scene there. <laughs> uh, if you've found this useful, obviously, I don't need to tell you what to do, uh, although I probably will do. Go down, leave a comment, leave a like, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And don't forget to turn on notifications as well, because you wouldn't want to miss one of my uh, my videos <laughs> or live streams. Uh, and so uh, so that is that is all for this video. But what I'll do is I'll leave a link to some other Ecamm Live and Keyboard Maestro, in fact, Keyboard Maestro videos over on the right-hand side. <laughs> Until the next video, have a great day.